tour dates, ladies and gentlemen, coming up. We are in uh, the month of September, coming to Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Wichita, Springfield, Missouri, headed up to Canada, Ottawa, Peterborough, London, and rounding out September in Myrtle Beach and Roanoke, Virginia, October, Greensboro, North Carolina, returning home, the prodigal son. I can't call myself that, I don't think. <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia. Birmingham, Alabama, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Springfield, Illinois, and Evansville, Indiana. Oh, November, we're going to Columbus, Joliet, Rockford, Milwaukee. Can't get enough of Canada Canada going back. Mm-hmm. Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Calgary. That's just the uh, that's just the NHL team. Yeah, the cities. NHL, the yeah, NHL, the NHL tour. Run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> run. Yeah. Reading, Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania, sold out. Norfolk, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, Norfolk, PA. That's not right. Norfolk, Virginia. I don't know where it is. Yeah, anyway. And then Abilene, Texas, baby. Love to have you out. Net positive. We're in the studio. Yes, sir. What's up, baby? How we're are here, you man. Been? I'm good. How you doing? Back at it. Andrew? What's up? No, oh, yeah, he says what's up secondarily. Uh, big episode <laughs> today. Yeah, dude. Wait, no, I went to uh, Tyler Hubbard from uh, Florida George Lines in the house. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, we're going to get into that in a second. I was at, uh, we tried to meet up this weekend. Yeah, we tried. Nah, we failed. Didn't work. Nah, Andrew, what happened, dude? Here. Dude. <laughs> Don't no. get me started no. on this. I was so We worked it out. Me and Alex worked it out that it's not it's it's fine. But we were happy where we were. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh and yeah. We decided to switch it up and never switch it up unless you got a concrete plan. If you're going good, keep Just it. Keep going. If you're yeah, going keep good, keep vibe. going. Where were you guys going good at? LA Jackson. And then he switched it up to Ophelia's, right? And no. then it all came apart. And I was like, I'm going to meet y'all down there. It all came apart. Sad day. Yeah, yeah dude, I must. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you hate to see it. I ended up at FGL house, though. Nice. Oh, yeah, baby. The rooftop. How fitting. On the floor. Yeah, how fitting for this episode. Yep. I go, I need to do some research. You know what? We That's got what it. That's what it was. It was recon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Florida Georgia Line house. When we talked about it in the episode, actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, towards the back half, we talked about it. Yeah, that was one of the first band bars on broadway yeah when you guys started naming them off it was like oh yeah those ones weren't there before they Came were one of the original yeah. ones yeah it was awesome to have uh tyler on the pod today great dude yeah it was awesome because we we've it happened very organically mm-hmm. because we uh said that we are a fgl stand podcast yes i go dude i'm not tolerating any fgl slander and that was early. That was probably, I was, I've been thinking about it. It was probably like first 25 episodes to we took that stance. Because I got, yeah, because I got, I could just get so like, like, it's same way I get about everything. It's like people are like the popular take. Yeah. I just go, it's, it's, it's shallow. Yeah. Did, you know, if you went to an FGL, like, here's my top five. Mm-hmm. I've said this before. Eric Church, uh, Garth, Kenny, FGL, Morgan. Nice. Now consider my age. So it was like, what about George Strait or what about Merle Hacker? I was like, I wasn't around then. Right. Okay, I wasn't around then. If you're telling me right now who the top five, well, you're going to go to the concert and sing every song, that's going to be my five. I think that's a solid five. Yeah, and it was, oh, uh, uh, no, dude, dude, dude. You know every single one of their songs. Yeah. This man's voice, everyone has heard, everyone knows it. Yeah. Everyone knows it. Dude, FGL stuff, like... It, took over when I was like towards the back half of my college career. Oh yeah. And it was I didn't even like country music and I was like I think I like country if this is what country is. I'm into just it. Just totally redefined what it was for me. Wait, dude, that might, I might have the same kind of story. I mean, I liked I liked I knew of like Garth. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't like I didn't know I didn't know of anyone like I would never go to a country concert. No. I th- FGL might be about first one. Yeah, I think I think. If and I'm, then I got into it from there. Yeah, I think it, it's like a gateway wow, drug into dude. country music. FGL kind of like gets it's you. easy. It's like so the, you get hooked uh, on it, and then FGL is like the they're like the Zen pouch of country music. Nice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, dude, it's, it's like, like yeah. it's sunny. Nah, it's throw not in, that. Throw nah, in FGL. Yeah, you know? it, dude, it's like it's little. It's mint flavored. Yeah, just like a, you like it. Yeah, you like stuff similar to the this. high pitch. Yeah. You like it. It's gonna be good for you. I think you like it. Oh, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> they got more. He's going. He's going around. Where can I get more of this FGL? You more FGL. Yo, you got any of that FGL? It was a good combo too, man. It was fun. It was man. good. I yeah. like the I like that you his his background has like like all of our guests so far, yeah. faith interwoven in as yeah. well. The way that yeah. that played into his his like secular music career. Yeah. It's cool. And what did he not to get into much of the behind the scenes of it, but what as soon as we turned off 
the mics. Yeah. What did he say? He said, podcasts are fun. Yes, dude. That's what, we, <laughs> that's what we've been trying to say to like all these, uh, like it, 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 there's a lot of like, because it's very free flowing maybe. And there's not a lot of, in terms of like the media or an interview, it's, it's going to be a little bit looser. Yeah. And you're going to get into more personal topics. But every time someone comes in, they go, oh, we love that. I yeah. Go, yeah. That's what we want to do right by the guests. Yes. And, but it's the same with like, it, it, I mean, if you go in like the, you watch, you watch the Tonight Show, mm -hmm. whatever, ever, for an hour every night, and then you get into like someone's pod. And you go, I, I watch that now. I go, yeah, mm -hmm. because it's, 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 it, it's so unique and it's so like, you get so like personal. It's so like, you, you feel like you're a part of this group. Yeah, it's, we always say like it's like uh, it's like we're just hanging out, and then there happen yeah. to be cameras and mics. Yeah, because you really get to know who he if is. If the podcast is good, right. That's what it. That's what we, we try Ideally. to do. That. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the goal. We can't always reach the perfect Zen place of that. But For yeah. sure, I think we definitely reached it on this zen, one. I felt like Z E N for Zen, zen not yeah, zen. zen. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I feel like he got really comfortable. I felt like we all just had a really kind of like open chat. I thought yeah. it was great. I think people are gonna love this one. That was really, and I like the yeah the the talking about youth group mm -hmm. and stuff coming up all the way to the. Uh, uh, the tour bus days and then where he's at now. Yep. I thought it was a perfect uh, arc. This podcast brought to you by Babel, Babel, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. What's Babel in Spanish? Probably Babel. Babel. Uh, <laughs> nice, dude. Nice, uh, the second best way to learn a language is Babel. Ladies and gentlemen, the best way to learn a language is through immersion, mm -hmm. living where the language is spoken natively and using it every day. But that's not possible for everybody. Right. Everybody's not that rich. True. But we got jobs. Yeah. We got uh, social things we need to take care of where we live. We got to make money. So this, what's the second best way, uh, Alex? Babel. Babel, baby. Because of Babel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. One in five Americans have learned a new language. I'm on that. I'm on that uh, list. I know Spanish a little bit on their bucket list. Uh, Por qué? Uh, no, I'm not doing that. I'm just going <laughs> to translate that sentence directly. That's impossible. Uh, check it off your list this summer with Babbel. Travel plans this summer. Learn to speak like a local with Babbel. Where are you trying to go? Honduras. We went there. Are you trying to go to Spain? Maybe. What language do they speak in South Africa? English. I believe ah, so. That's not going to work. Yep. Yeah, shoot. I messed <laughs> that up. Uh, instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps. Yeah, don't do that. That's mm. a little more. Get on the Babbles game, baby. Quick 10-minute lessons that are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language. And it's little. Oh, dude, you know what's big in mm. churches in the summer? What? Mission trips, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah nice. There How are you going to reach the, the people for the gospel That's if you right. can't speak to them? Yep. That's not in there. That's not in the copy here. But if you want to go to a foreign language, here's what you wanted to do. You want to impress the girl on your mission trip. Nice. So you can take her out on the town because you know the language. Yep. Say, you pastor, hey, pastor Ed, I got it. Mm -hmm. Me and Jessica going in town. You don't speak Spanish. I do, though. Yeah. Oh, the I cartel mean, just pulled up? I got yeah. it. Hola. Don't I'm worry a, about it. I'll handle this in the cops. Let me handle yeah. it. I'm a, I've been on that Babel game for three weeks. Yeah. I'm on dude. level 29 of Babel. I'm dude, good. You come back to church, and because you know on Sunday they got to give their the story. Right. We sent the kids out yes. to Guatemala. They're back. Tell the story. If you're on this, it's game over. Dude. Yes, dude. And game over. Studies at Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babel is better. For instance, one study found that Using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. And That's unbelievable. Way cheaper than a full way semester at cheaper. college. Yeah. We talk about Belmont a little bit in this Oh, episode. in the episode. Yeah, we yeah. do. Bring yeah. up Spanish over there. Here's the special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. 55% off your mm -hmm. Babbel subscription, but only for listeners at babbel.com slash net. B-A-B-B-E-L dot com get 55 percent off babble.com slash net spelled b-a-b-b-e-l dot com slash net or hit the link in the description episode below rules and restrictions may apply and i thought this episode was great yeah dude awesome oh yeah we loved having tyler in the studio it was fun to talk about all the stuff uh from the past how we came up very similar uh yeah it feels like some kind of uh like we're all just hanging out here together the best man yeah there happen to be cameras there's cameras in here so we can pass it along to y'all yep so y'all can come y'all can come hang out with us uh hope you guys enjoy this conversation as much as we did ladies and gentlemen tyler hubbard is here that's Yo. what they do in this 
studio. Wait, wait, wait in the studio yesterday. Wait in the studio. How often do you go in the studio? Uh, depends on what you clarify studio. Probably three or four times a week. <laughs> oh yeah. All I know about country, they always, they always, everybody's writing with each other. Everybody's writing. Oh, dude, I gotta write. I gotta yeah, write. Right, right, right. Gotta it's keep like, up. It's like, uh, it's like Jordan. You just gotta put the shots up. That's it. Isn't it? I do love writing though. It's fun. Writing country. The daily grind. <coughs> well, the, uh, yeah, do you have, do you have one in your house? I have a small, like, I turned our storage closet into my. Come on, dude. That's for space. the kids, dude. Bro, I, the kids actually took over my. I used to have a nice space, and then it turned into a playroom. Oh dang, dude! And yeah. I got kicked to the closet. You did straight up. You're like, but I'm building a camper it. to write with. So if I can figure out where everybody lives, <laughs> yeah, I could just pull I'm coming up to your house, dude. Bring oh, yeah, the writing yeah. camper. I bet, yeah. Post up in the driveway. Was there ever a, t- a tour, a post, a post van, pre bus, camper tour? There was a, there was a Mercedes Sprinter. In between yeah, those days oh yeah, with the yeah, yeah. With the drive overnight? So close enough. Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't have a driver. We drove it, but uh, we switched off. And- you drove? How many people? Like 12 of us. Okay. <laughs> so you need a bus for that. Mm. Couldn't afford it. Couldn't afford it. We um, had a yeah. van. We had a van with 12 people, too, bro. Before the Sprinter van. With like the a trailer? Van with a trailer, yeah. Oh, yeah, the 15 passenger. A lot of people still. So I we mean, had room to grow. We yeah. had 12 guys. Yeah, you got room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you need twelve guys for, bro? I don't even remember. I mean, we had to. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you do? Yeah. yeah. Well, everybody's got to be friends if you go in twelve and in a fifteen That's passenger. It, yeah. Bam. Real. Quick. But you know, if you're a singer, you don't have to drive. Is that still uh, a rule? Nah, it wasn't the rule. I don't know where that rule came from. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you would go. Whoever like, was the, the least <laughs> drunk got to drive. There you go, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, net positive, baby. We're here. The legend, uh, Tyler Hubbard in the studio. Welcome, yeah, brother. Buddy. Thanks for having Welcome, me. Welcome, brother. Good to have you, man. We should, we've been trying to uh, nail this down for a second. It feels good to be here. Oh yeah. Well, this is the this is the official uh, this is the official FGL Stand podcast, Ooh, baby. Yep. Did you see That's that I clip? I saw that the clip, clip dude. I, <laughs> I wonder when that I was. I love it. I love it. When was that? that was, I mean, this last year. I think I mean, it's it been forever. Early on. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, we. I think we connected, I and, love we, the, and then uh, we were at. Uh, what were we saying? We're just saying we, we don't we don't tolerate any any FGL slander on this podcast. Yeah, none. We don't accept it. <laughs> yeah, That's hilarious. Dude. I love the FGL passion. Yeah, I, I love the the skit where you're like, people like to act like they don't know the lyrics. Oh yeah, but dude. they know the, every All word, of them. <laughs> every single one. Yeah. Oh man, that got me, dude. Well, we think I think awesome. we we talked the similar because we were at the uh, uh, I don't think you were there, Alex. But we went to the Nickelback concert. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's and this is like the same type, which is has to be awesome. It was unbelievable, dude. And all the haters are there just jamming out. All of them. Uh-huh. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't know who. Top they, of their lungs. Yeah. yeah. They're all, t- I mean, it's full to the rafters. People yeah. hanging from the place. Just jamming. They played uh, Burn It to the Ground at the end, and everybody went, every, it was, everybody was, went nuts. That's awesome. I wonder how that guy, I mean, what's that guy's name? Chad? Chad, yeah, you're right, yeah. I mean, he's, it seemed like he just, I mean, when did the, because I, I came to the, an FGL show with that Jason Aldean show at Red Rocks. Oh, yeah. Where was that on the on the the post fifteen passenger van days? Aldean that a tour, couple years probably post. a couple years past fifteen passenger van. That's days. crazy. But, 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 but before headlining, yeah, for sure. We might have still no. We were probably in one bus at that point. Yeah, and the bus can't even get up there, can it? Which we thought we were. Awesome. When we oh, one bus? bus? Yeah, the yeah, bus. Dude. Yeah. Red yeah. Rocks is funny, bro. I think we had to park at the bottom of yeah, the hill. Yeah, you had to park at the bottom of the hill. Hike up yeah. to the show. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big hill. Too. Jason Aldean <laughs> had a helicopter up there, but you had yeah, to hike. Yeah, yeah we hiked. Hike, Y'all got to hike. Yeah. But that was, it was kind of a similar vibe that people, everybody was on, and then everybody was kind of trailing out during Jason. And that's probably fair to say. To, <laughs> no, that's probably fair to say to him because everybody has that ascent. I don't remember it that way, but that's yeah. awesome that you do. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time, man. It was a good, uh, man, a good season, and it was fun watching that build. It it was yeah. fast and crazy and fun, and uh, and you know, props to guys like Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, who were kind of like some of the first big artists to call us up and say, "Let's let's go on tour." But uh, it Give worked out the for them hander. too. Yeah, yeah, it worked out for them. So. Yeah. So that was so you were so you were in the uh, in the 
I mean, a 15 passenger van is tough. Dude. Ooh, baby. You were 12 and a 15 passenger. 12 guys. Yep. Because you needed all the production. <clears throat> yeah. And we pulled my trailer. My, my, uh, oh, yeah. Actually, I had this same trailer since I was 15. I had a car detail business that I did all the way through college and everything. And then, oh, yeah. Uh, that, that trailer turned into a, on the weekends, all the, yeah. Pressure washer came out and all the amps went in and then I, you know, come home and oh, wash man. cars. But again. see, but, but I I feel like people think that was in 1980. In 73. That's what's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's not. It was like it, so, less than 10 years ago. 2010, I was still washing cars, you know. Oh, my. Just to pay the bills. What was that like transition like from that? Because I was, I was like in college to just after college when FGL exploded. From the outside looking in, it looked like it was overnight. How did that transition yeah. actually go, though? I mean, it was a few years, you know, honestly, of kind of like what I'm saying, where we're like touring on the weekends, trying to build a fan base. We were literally calling clubs ourselves, oh, acting yeah. like we were agents. Like, nice. we got this band. You guys need to book them. They'll really come play for free if you just pay for their gas. And that's what we did, bro. We would go in the southeast and build fans, you know, playing clubs and, and driving ourselves, And then during the week, we would figure out, because this was pre-publishing deal, pre-any kind pre -everything. of... Pre-everything. Pre-anything. Yeah, yeah. uh, so I would go back to washing cars during the week and doing, you know, BK doing odds and in jobs itself. And we had a four-year degree at Belmont, and we were two years out of college still figuring right. out, you know. So a lot of people were kind of like, yo, when are you guys going to get, like, a real job? I'm like, I got a real job. Two of them. Hey. So we're... Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, anyways, and it kind of, you know, the transition was cool, though, because once we signed a publishing deal, uh, I remember our first deal was like for 1500 bucks a month because that's how much it took for us to cover our, our uh, pay our bills at the time. That's the most money you ever seen. And so I was like, made it, bro. This is the dream. I can now, like, write songs Monday through Friday and not have to watch. They would pay you and BK 1500 bucks a month. Yeah, a piece. So we were that's balling. it, bro. That's, what made, bro. that's all you need. Paid the bills. Wrote you songs. Hey, I would imagine the fine print of that contract you didn't even look at. <laughs> no, no, no. How much? Fifteen hundred. Cool. Let's go. Oh, so you're gonna send me fifteen hundred bucks to write songs. Say less. Yeah, Son. yeah, yeah. yeah. Time up. <laughs> Say less. Yeah. So that, but then, and then, well, we. I mean, I did the same thing where my I was like my little sister. I made an email for her. Nice. But I was answering the email. Right, so we're right. like, can we book John? I'll be like, let me talk to John. He's probably not going to go for this price. But it was <laughs> right. me. Yeah, I'll yeah. see what he, I'll, I'll negotiate for him. <laughs> yeah. I, what, what, were you guys single back then or no? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. See, that'll be, that'll cause some distractions. Sure. See, once, once people start being like, wait, you're the guy from the. Yeah. That's what those extra three seats in the van are for. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, baby, good to meet you. There's a you can pick the third or fourth row. Yeah. Your choice. Up but, to you. There's uh, two guys. Don't mind uh, the other guys yeah, in the two van. Sound They're guys cool. playing. Yeah. Oh, we have our middle seats. They're left, cool. So. Trust yeah. tree. <laughs> I want to say trust tree. I want to nice. say, uh, hey girl, uh, you want to come back to the tour bus is different mm. than hey girl, you want to come back to the van. <laughs> or you call <laughs> it the same, different. and they're just you know you really see what they're in it for when they yeah. Where's the bus? Yeah. This is the bus. This is the bus. It yeah. looks a lot like a Ford. Van, oh, but yeah. this is the bus. <laughs> so, well, I I wrote down a question that we could ask you right now. I wrote the question was, and I feel this a lot for myself. When, from, at what point in this whole journey were you were you the happiest making music? Oh, good question. Mm, probably at the very beginning. Yeah. Like 2012, like working with Joey and Moy, figuring out NBK and figuring out what we are and what we're doing. That was yeah. a fun, that was a fun season. And then yeah. probably this new season too. So sort of the beginning of this, yeah. you know, the solo journey has been really fun too. And, and just getting a step into like a creative headspace that I've really never been in as far. I mean, I've always had a partner. I've always collaborated, if you will, yeah. with somebody. So uh, this you, has been a lot of fun too, getting to do this. Talking about Nelly? <clears throat> Nelly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 Nelly always. So uh, no, it's, so it's been really fun, and you know, I've always written um, yeah. consistently, just to write, whether it's for for FGL or for other artists, or now for me. Yeah. Um, but adding that third dynamic of oh wow, like I'm putting my name on this, these songs, and you know, it yeah. adds a, uh, you know, a, a different individual element more personal you know so it makes it it makes it more fun but it's also fun like to write with other artists and really yeah. still try to you know um dig out what they need what they want to say and their voice and their you know 
um, yeah. their brand and all those types of things. So it's as I'm learning myself, it's fun to also, you know, that kind of translates into when I'm writing with other artists too. So it's been cool. Would it, would it, would it be, I'm trying to think of what a, a similar comparison was like, if, let's say like Jordan had Pippen and then like he goes for the Blazers and he wants to prove he can do it without Jordan or, or the, yeah. not to say, but is that, would that be, or maybe like getting, if you get, you let go from a company, let's say back at, what were you doing? Pressure washing back then? Yeah. Washing cars. Let's yeah. say washing cars, you were working for a guy and then you're like, I'm going to start my own car washing business. I don't, is there something to prove that maybe you can do it on your own or no? Uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Cause I definitely have been told that that can't happen. And you know, the chances of that, you know, what you yeah. guys have built, it's amazing, and it is. But, uh, yeah, I think a time or two I was probably caught wind of, of people doubting or someone saying, I don't think you could do the that, old caught, The old caught wind. So yeah, I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, so I'm headline, like, oh. You spot a headline and out the corner of your eye. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. you know, to be honest, it's been cool because what I've learned about myself in the process is, like, I love a challenge, oh, you yeah. know, and, oh, yeah. and I was losing that. With FGL, we've kind of, you know – um you know, we've, we sort of accomplished a lot of our challenges and faced yeah. a lot. And it was sort of like time for a new challenge. And I, mm -hmm. I didn't know that I wanted a new challenge or, or didn't know that it was coming or really wasn't even prepared for it. But once I found myself in the uh, position I was in, as far as um, sort of being forced into this situation and, yeah. and not really having the choice and being like, okay, well, if I'm going to go here anyways, let me, let me, face this challenge head on let me okay. give it all yeah, i got yeah. let me smash it and let me uh let me use this to motivate me and, and give me new life and creative energy which has been cool gosh it's, yeah i've been there i've been there the same i've been through my own issues in my own career and you go oh i didn't like i asked that question about when you were the happiest because judah smith mm -hmm. is a pastor friend of mine he goes yeah. i liked he runs that big mega church in yeah. la and all those celebrities go there and he said i when i was starting my dad was the pastor he was the youth pastor right and he goes I, I i i loved just going on wednesday to the youth group and explaining the scriptures to those kids mm. and now it's turned into all this right all of the right. conferences and the instagram and the celebrities and seat assignments for like artists and stuff yeah. like that is church and he goes and i know it's great and he said, arguably, I was happier back then. Yeah. Well, what I've learned is to that point is like going back and rebuilding and playing these clubs and, and smaller intimate venues and stuff that like reminds me of why I fell in love with it the first go around. Yeah. And it's even sweeter the second time because you've sort of been to where you think you want to go. Yeah. And you've and you've realized what that's like. And obviously that's amazing on one hand, but also you lose a lot of that, a lot of that um connection i would say you know intimacy with oh, the fans it's so big. when it's yeah, so yeah, big yeah, right yeah, so yeah, going yeah. back to these clubs and just getting to rock these things out pack them full of people and like connect with them on that is really bringing uh new joy for sure so i i totally get it yeah and i and shout out judah smith too by the way our guy yeah yeah judah. all the celebrity seat assignments were like yo can we get a seat on yeah I'm like <laughs> hey bro second row please <laughs> <laughs> this podcast brought to you by Miracle Made. Oh, yeah. Miracle Made. I've just come straight. Well, uh, listen, we do, we do the podcast at 10 a.m. Yep. I would say I'm straight from the Miracle Made sheets. That that makes people think that I'm lazy. I don't, I don't get so. up and then come straight here. I do other stuff. I don't do much before this. Uh, dude, imagine the moms just turning this off. Because, because we just said that? These guys get up at 9.30 yeah. and yeah. come to the pot. What? We're, we, we work nights. Yeah. But AG1. Where the nights are good. Our bodies are working overtime while we're asleep. <laughs> That's right. We got the Miracle Made <laughs> sheets, baby. Whether you want to get more fit, be a better parent, or get more done at work, there's one thing that will help, and that is better sleep. Mm. With the Miracle Made sheets, you can tap into the power of self cooling temperature regulation, which has been to show an improved sleep quality by over 20%. Do you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor bacteria? Do you know that, Alex? Ew. More than a toilet seat. Really? Ugh. I got to change mine more often. That's actually extremely gross. Yeah. It can lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses, and it's just gross. Yeah. Uh, Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding, such as sheets, pillowcases, comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Love that. If someone came out 
with a you never have to wash these sheets, that would be impossible. That nobody would be impossible. Could, nobody could come up with it. If that. anybody was to do it, it would be Miracle Made. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, it would be. Have you ever seen those toilets where they have the plastic and then it goes? Yes, I have seen You've that. seen those? Yeah. They're like in airports. And stuff. Yeah, I don't really even understand how that works. It's I, mean, just, I have it's no like, idea. It's like a close up magic. I'm just yeah. like, yeah, it must be real. I don't know. I was like, how did you guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah like I just <laughs> see it right in front of me and I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't ask any questions. Yeah, like, just, that's unbelievable. It keeps working. That's fine. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Miracle Made, we got them. Alex got them. Self cooling properties for better sleep self-cleaning uh you still do have to clean them but they last three times longer yeah and three times less laundry is always good oh, yeah luxurious comfort and quality oh dude, this is not gonna be this is not gonna shine uh positively on me what i i'm embarrassed to admit this what'd you do dude i have a a laundry service okay they just come and i put it in a bag and then come over and do it and bring it back Okay, well, first of all, I'd like that contact if you could I know, share I mean, with me after I know moms are always like, really? You guys got up at nine and somebody else did? What are you doing? What are you doing? What life do you guys what, are you, I got three kids. I got soccer practice. What do you What do you wake up at night? You don't have time for laundry, John? <laughs> Dang it. Uh, <laughs> but try miracle.com slash net positive. Try miracle made sheets today. It's a perfect way to give someone you love the gift of better, more luxurious sleep. We talked last week about that... Uh, if you have a someone you're interested in, you're flirting with, don't send them the gift of sheets. Right. But other than that, maybe a boss don't send them sheets. Yep. Any family members, any type of holiday, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Um, yeah, this is the gift to give. Yeah. And when have you ever opened up sheets from someone? Never. It's, no, it's I great. Take that. It's unbelievable. It's a perfect way to give someone you love the gift of better, more luxurious sleep. Save over 40%. And be sure to use a promo code net positive and check out to save even more and get three free towels. Miracle made so confident in their product. It's backed by a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, send it back. They'll give you a refund. Upgrade your sleep right now. MiracleMade.com. Go to Miracle. Go to, sorry, try miracle.com slash net positive. Use the code net positive. Claim your three piece towel set and save. Over 40%. Try miracle.com slash net positive. Or even better, hit the link in the episode description below. AG1, ladies and gentlemen, has been a part of millions of mornings since 2010. I wonder if you can take it at night. Yeah, I've taken it at night. Have you? Yeah, because I missed it yesterday morning. I took it last night. You take it at night. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like on last night and then also on this morning. Oh, you're so dosed I kind of feel like I'm double dosed. Dude, yeah, you're dosed out. Way. Those things are just like lemmings that just, just work. And yeah, dude. <laughs> getting after it. <laughs> getting after it. And you wake up in the morning like, dang, I feel great. All 75 of the high quality vitamins, Ooh. probiotics, and whole food sourced ingredients in my tummy right now. And you're laying it. down. You're mm -hmm. out. It's yep. just going in there working. They're working bro. overtime. Just like when you go out of town and the cleaning lady comes. Yeah. We got you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. AG1. That's the none of that was in the copy. Uh, <laughs> replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more with one drinkable habit. I'm on it. Alex is on it. I don't know if Andrew's on it. They might not send him any because uh, he doesn't have a mic. <laughs> We're but, gatekeeping um, the AG1 yeah. <laughs> from Andrew. We're running an AB test right here. Yo. This is on oh, Athletic yeah. Greens. Yo. Hi. And this yeah. is off Athletic yeah, Greens. Dang. Boo. Boo. It doesn't have <laughs> Sad. it. I'm just, on too. <laughs> just looking so depressed. <laughs> Please. Uh, we'll see, dude. We'll see. Uh, just one daily serving uh, gives me the comprehensive foundational nutrition I need, baby. Supports energy, focus, strength, and clarity with, like Alex said, 75 high-quality vitamins, probiotics, and whole food sourced ingredients. Why take a bunch of different things? Mm. Just mix one scoop of powder in water. I put ice in mine. Alex doesn't. Nice. Um, that'll get you set up. One scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. AG1 gives you increased energy, mood support, making it easy to, as Joel Osteen says, live your best life. Living my best. Ben Rector also says that. Mm. That's a good song. Uh, if you're looking for a simpler more effective investment with your health, try AG1 and get five free AG1 travel packs plus free one-year supply of vitamin D. Go to drinkag1.com slash net positive. That's drinkag1.com slash net positive. Or hit the link in the episode description below. Get yourself a body like me and Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. Or is there anybody from... The van is still here. Yeah, bro. We have uh, actually the van. From the 15 Not passenger. Not the van. Anybody actually, from the 15 the passenger is still on the bus. No, but there's guys from the, uh, from 
back in back in one bus days. I mean, we, some of the guys that's with me have been with us for like twelve years. You know, subtle flex. Yeah. One back, bus, back one bus. Day. Yeah, yeah, slide yeah. that it's in. Not the, you know. Yeah, but we. Uh, <laughs> but no, so it's it's been cool. Actually, Tom, who used who played bass for us our whole career, uh, just went over. He's now playing for Luke Bryan, which is great. Um, oh yeah. We lost Tom in the pan due to the pandemic. We lost Tom, but uh, he's dead. It's a good, you know, he's he's with Luke Bryan now. So. He, oh yeah, I, 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 dead I, to I, us. To no, I thought you were making a joke, but I wasn't lost. sure, dude. I was like, got real serious, real fast. <laughs> we lost. Dang, that'll yeah, really. He's hurt not dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. We lost. But, yeah, we. Uh, so yeah, Tom's a homie. He's still out playing, and yeah, we <laughs> we uh, we've truly roughed it together back in the day. So it's well, it does. It did seem like all those that the COVID did kind of like. If at least for comedy, COVID shook everything up, and then the people like y the artists that were like in it to make jokes, we would do shows in in parking lots and anywhere we could because we just were obsessed with doing it. Right. We didn't really, I mean, there was tour deals and all that. All, all that stuff was on hold. You couldn't go anywhere, right. so we just like whoever wants to do. And all the guys that were in it to, I don't know, say get famous or like. They were, were all gone, right? Immediately gone. So that was kind of like a reset. Yeah, was it sim was it similar in music? I would say, uh, I would say maybe so. It definitely recalibrated some things for people, and uh, especially I would say like the guys that were just on the cusp of really like yeah. you know their their first big tour or their first big direct support slot where they were going to get hurt some them. exposure i would say it just set them back and that's where yeah. i kind of felt for i had some buddies you know that just felt like they really got set back for a couple of years including i mean yeah we all did but you know um guys that were in that and some of them never recovered so yeah. i would say I, to I, your I, point yeah, same you with know, comedy it's, it's kind of like it sort of did it filtered the it filtered some some people out and some people couldn't quite come back from it yeah, that, I mean, yeah, because the bit you would hear about the guys like Kenny or something, he's like at 40 people on salary. He's like, I'm going to keep Garth. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep up. So we, all those people at that level could stay. At least until it was, yeah. I mean, I'm sure at some point it, the well ran dry too, but they hopefully yeah, got yeah. back to playing shows before then. But FGL, that's what we did. We kept everyone on and we kind of ran the well dry. And then, and then. Two years, three years later, we're still not playing shows, so we're just yeah, like, I mean, you can't well, forever. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, had to yeah, say like, eventually, yeah. literally, told the guys, "Hey, we love y'all, but like, yeah. we have no more. The well's dry, so uh, Man, we got no more funds." To that sounds like a Bible verse, bro. That's it. Hey, bro. We love like you. Spiritual. But, yeah. the well's dry, baby. <laughs> the well's dry. <laughs> we love you. Go find you a spring somewhere, yeah. I guess. Well, you. Well, we talked about that the other day. We, you you went to Christian school. Yeah. 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 And you went and you're you're. In Georgia, mm -hmm. next to the rival of my high school. That's right, yeah. bro. That's different, crazy. Small world. Different you times. The, oh, different, you weren't there at the same time? Uh, I mean, maybe. I graduated uh, high school right in after me. 05. Yeah, I graduated high school in 02. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe if you were a phenom on the first. little on the, crossover. Yeah. <laughs> I was a freshman star on the basketball court. Not really. <laughs> not, 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 <laughs> not really. Uh, well, you, you told me that, that we, when I saw you whiskey gin that you went back. I did recently. My uh, high school had like a 25th year uh, anniversary, which is crazy because I was the first class to graduate this school. From the school. Yeah. You built that school. And we were like 12, 12 people deep in graduating really? class. Yeah. Put everybody in the van. Yeah, dude. Straight up. Everybody, <laughs> no, they were, everybody in, in the, the van. van. That was the yeah. whole class, yeah. bro. <laughs> Going to Whitewater. Bro. So, yeah, it was crazy. So now it's it's, you know, grown a ton. They asked me to come back and made me kind of laugh because I'm like, well, Come back for what? And they're like, well, play some songs. <laughs> Come back for what? And I'm like, what kind of songs you want me to play? Yeah. Because, I mean, they're pretty. Oh, you're talking I about whiskey my... and stuff like that. Right. Like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, have yeah, you guys yeah, heard yeah. my music? Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, when I was here, you guys wouldn't even, we couldn't even listen to, you know, I don't know. Couldn't listen to Garth Brooks. Couldn't listen to Garth Brooks at the prom, yo. Like, what are we doing? So, <laughs> no, that was, no, dude, you know, what was big at that time was, was a uh, juvenile back then. Oh, Dang bro. Up. No, absolutely not. Not in our school, bro. <laughs> Only in the parking lot. Only <laughs> in the parking lot. Dude, back that thing up when, when we, somebody must huge. have like got the, oh, huge. Yeah, bro. And somebody at prom, I mean, we went to the same type of school as I was 80 kids, Christian school. That song was just, and so you start the hook of the beginning of that song, and every every kid would lose their minds. <laughs> yep, that's dude. right. That was, we weren't allowed to listen to that. But that was somebody, right before Nelly was probably popping off too. So, it oh was, yeah, man, Juvenile, yeah, Nelly. 
<laughs> Wayne, we were listening to everybody. But you said they were the there was lot. some kind of that you, you now nah, you weren't like a rebellious kid, but they weren't were they there's so many rules there. Yeah, they were pretty uh no drinking obviously. No, no drinking, bro. I mean the <laughs> But that was honestly something they didn't even have to deal with at that time. I mean, they were worried about us keeping our shirts tucked in and stuff, right? So it was kind of <laughs> yeah. like, it was like, yeah. okay, you know, like. It's a different time. It was a different time. And yeah. honestly, even going back was good because I could tell they've shifted a little bit and, and sort of <clears throat> maybe figured out what's There's kids a drinking more now. That's now good. they're all getting yeah. lit. Yeah. <laughs> partying and worshiping at the same time. No, they, but, no yeah, but it's still It was kind of cool, yeah. though. I went back. I played uh, a lot of the hits. Yeah. And and I kind of and I actually took my buddy Chris Tomlin with me, which helped oh, yeah. balance it out. But I was able to kind of like share my story, yeah, through my music, and then my story of how Chris and I became good friends, and then you know making a record together and doing some things we've done. It just really like actually worked out perfectly, where yeah. it wasn't just like, okay, here's here's all the hits I've written, and I know none of these are. And uh, I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was cool. We literally had like a a half country concert and a half. You know, riding to work. I, I literally went from playing "We Fall Down" yeah to cruise. Oh yeah, and so that was an interesting transition. We I fall think. down to we fall down drinking whiskey. It's That's the it. Same. It's a transition. <laughs> till we stumble. Yeah. We stumble. <laughs> we fall down till we stumble. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hit. well. If if there was if Tyler Hubbard is here and Chris Tomlin is here, if, if one's trying to pull the guy country, the other guy's trying to pull the guy Christian, who's Who's in this tug of war? Who's winning? I don't know, dude. I'll be honest. I mean, Chris is like from Texas, dude. Like he's I saw him a country, yesterday. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like a country dude at heart. So, yeah. and we both love Jesus, but we both, you know, like to have a good time and <laughs> grow up a lot of the same way. So, um, I don't know. I'd say it probably depends on the day. Well, there is like a the the country the country and the Christian thing has always been hand in hand yeah. since the like yeah. It's kind of like understood, like we, we, uh, I mean, cuss on a Sunday, pray on a Monday. Is that's that right? Is that the right word? I think so. Cuss yeah, on that's the right days. Pass Sounds it around right. and with, the, yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Something like that. Cuss on, yeah. But it's always been Christians, like you don't hear that in hip hop. Right. No, they do go hand in hand. I think it's the, you know, country, country music's morals and values and beliefs kind of align a lot of times with, yeah. I mean, you can, you know. There's definitely a big crossover there. How did that uh how did that foundation kind of influence like FGL sound and like your approach to music as that started to come around? Uh like the like the Christian music influence? Or? Yeah. Well, honestly, like I said, I was listening to Christian music and Chris Tomlin, like in high school, right? Playing and I was like leading worship, you know. And then I was Don't like, tell him that, by the way. Dude, I used to No, I did, school. bro. That was like when I met him. I told him that I'm like, bro, I, I mean, like, I don't mean that weird, like no disrespect, bro. Like I like you actually seem like my age for some reason yeah. now but like i grew up listening to you dude like i learned how to play guitar playing your music oh, so yeah. uh and then you know so yeah it was it was cool but mutual respect and then uh but then i'm out in the parking lot like listening to rap music and then me and my band me and my boys are like setting up drums at the house and like playing rock music and just like <clears throat> uh a very di dynamic diverse i would say as far as my my musical uh my yeah. dad loved country music and Southern rock. And so we listened to, you know, Almond Brothers and Alabama and Leonard Skinner and Garth Brooks and Tim McGraw, you know, as oh, well yeah. as Shane and Shane and Chris Tomlin. So, you know, Shane and Shane. Shane and Shane. Bro, yeah, I haven't heard that in forever. That's how I learned how yeah. to harmonize, right? Yeah. Listen oh, to those yeah. guys. Like, wow. what, what is harmony? Oh, yeah. it's what Shane and Shane does. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, it is, it is unique in a way because you said that, like, uh, the music what, who was it influenced by but but fgl that music oh people are like i feel like with a lot of the music now with like uh let's say like hardy or like bailey zimmerman it's like this is something new we never heard i go yeah everybody that was big was something new like it, i'm like i'm coming on as a comic i'm doing this like i'm a christian but i'm doing this ed, like we never heard. like yeah but everybody that has come along or it's like, I'm, cause y'all were a sound right. that we were like with the people that love country were like, wait, what? And there's like hip hop influences in this. What, like what's what, everybody was like, what is this? Right. And where did that come from? Man, I don't really know, dude. I mean, it just, <laughs> you know, I would say a combination of mine and BK's influences and Joey Moy, like helping us yeah. develop that sound and put it together. And he was new to the country space. So he wasn't like, trying to be super nashville or super country radio he was just making, making music, music and yeah. and there was a special 
something special in that. You know, our first couple of albums were just purely like making music that we wanted to make and we loved listening to as opposed to ever trying to sound like anything. And so I think, you know, guys that come along that move the needle yeah. a little bit, the Hardys, the Baileys, the, you know, Zach Bryan, you know, the, a lot of these guys that are sort of doing their their own thing with a little yeah. flavor, a familiar flavor every in there, but, uh, but it's yeah. different in its own in its own way. So I think that's important if you want to stand out at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's obviously the same in, in comedy where, you know, I've heard a lot in, in country where the label has, oh, hey, we got we got Luke Combs. And then the other label's like, we need our Luke, Luke Combs. Combs. Or we have Lanny right. Wilson. We need our – I was like, no, dude, nobody ever great was like trying to be right. – now, you could be influenced by right. somebody, but – You're not going to be Lanny Wilson better than Lanny Wilson. No, we already have a Lenny Wilson. Right. Yeah. So we, yeah. So, but when y'all like, it's unique. And we were talking about before he came in here is that, that Morgan in a lot of ways has kind of the same hip hop like influences. Like, how was that watching that ascent, knowing that you, y'all were kind of on that same, like that, that door that he's walking through, you, y'all walked through the same door. Yeah. No doubt. It, it's cool, you know. Uh, been fun to watch him grow and evolve but also like i'm a big fan of morgan songs you know he's a great writer he backs it up like um i i find it to be an honor if we're like part of his influence and yeah. he and he's told us that we are and he's you know sang fgl songs before on <laughs> whatever it was american idol or the voice that he was oh, yeah. on at one point so like it's cool that we got to influence that but at the same time um now he's influencing me as a writer and as yeah. an artist like i love what he's doing and uh I think he's created enough of his own lane as well, you know, to to stand on his own two feet and to be unique. Obviously, at this point, he's standing on his feet just fine. Most most nights. I think he's going to be all right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> most nights. But, yeah, yeah. he's, uh, you know, doing great, and it's cool to uh, to see that. And, like I said, I'm I'm a fan of his music. I'm He's one of my favorites. Were you, so at, were you, were you in Boston? I went to Boston, yeah. Yeah, I saw kiddos. TikTok. Yeah. Did you see those? Do you see that stuff or no? I don't have no, I don't. Un unless best. you send it to me or no, one of my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had to tell some buddies though. I'm like, hey, bro, like I'm not on socials on my phone. So yeah, like yeah. if I'm if there's something I need to see, like shoot it to me. Because yeah. I I don't want to be like that out of loop. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Send like, it over if my I'm way. viral, I want to know. I got, yeah. three, I got three kids, bro. Yeah, yeah send yeah. me something. But uh but yeah, we had a good time because we took Taylor, we took Lib to see Taylor Swift two yeah. weeks ago. That's your So then we had to take the boys, yeah. Our oldest daughter. So then we got two boys and we're like, well, let's take them to let's take them to Wallen because I had the the weekend off and Hell so yeah. uh, went to Boston. Oh yeah, saw the gang. Hadn't seen Wallen play a show in forever or really? Hardy and so um, oh, yeah, or Bailey for that matter and Ernest. So it was a really good lineup. Oh, they I run, love yeah, all those they run guys. The whole thing. They run yeah. the whole thing. So it was yeah, uh, it was a good night. Well, when you when you feel, I feel like when when the. Uh, Nate Bargatze, who's a comic, just did Bridgestone. It's like a, you would be like, the rising tide, I was like, it lifts all the boats. Like, wouldn't that, mm. I feel like that success that's would, be, cool. would be good for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, we like country music. Let's go explore and look around right, here and see right. what other similar artists is good for everybody. Yeah. No yeah. Doubt. And, and Morgan's doing that, I think. I mean, yeah. this, at this point, he's like, he's a, he's not just a, a country superstar. He's yeah. all over. So it's, uh, He's definitely bringing people to the genre and growing. Well, where did – because when wh – wh how would you tell an artist like that to, to navigate this? I mean, Morgan's probably dealt with it a little bit of himself, but the – the so we talk about the van, right? There's 12 of us in the van. We're all growing. We're going to get big. Like, when did you first – I'll never forget the first time somebody said something negative about one of my videos. Hmm. I go – I mean, dude, I was depressed for months. I w publicly, someone criticized my art. Your art, and I, I'm, I, I was sitting in the airport. I never, I was sitting in the airport in Albany, and I, I looked at this tweet, and there was an article about, like, about if I was a Christian or if this art, this was helpful to this body of believers in critiquing other, right? And I, and dude, I was undone wow. for months. Yeah. And I didn't make anything and I didn't, but mm. like this impending rise, right? Cause you never know in the van that those days are coming. Right. So, and those people are already hating. Yeah. Were they <laughs> then? Uh, not too much, honestly, but we did. I mean, to, we, we endeared a lot of that <clears throat> because 
we were different, right? And people in this yeah. town, they they're scared of different a lot yeah. of times, and they want the same. And and you know, uh, so I'd say pretty early on, I started <laughs> catching wind uh, of yeah. <clears throat> of just like a little bit of that. But at the same time, you remember what hearing stuff or people saying just stuff being like yeah your, yeah just he said she said catching little things like yeah. you know that's not country and this is bro that's when the whole like bro country thing started yeah. which was fine but then some people had there's like a negative connotation to it like well this is blah 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 so we kind of started hearing that and then mainly to be honest it would be like because we were so busy at that time like we only would hear things when we'd be like in interviews or people like so what do you think about the bro country yeah, thing? and you're I'm like wait what what yeah. are you talking about <laughs> yeah. and they'd be like well that's what you guys are the bro yeah. and i'm like what well, i'm you when know that's yeah, i don't yeah, really yeah, know yeah. Blah, blah, but um but ultimately i do remember <clears throat> kind of a moment where BK and I were like, bro, like we're catching some heat. Like, what does this mean? And I'm like, well, catching some heat negative. Let's look at all the people who catch negative heat. Oh, let's yeah, start with yeah. Taylor Swift. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let's start with, and then let's go down the line. And, yeah. and so I kind of equated success with catching heat in a way where I'm oh, like, yeah. if you're not catching heat, if people aren't, if there's not a group of people that's talking badly about you, then you're probably not yeah. making a big enough impact. That's a country song. Right? So, so, yeah. I had to flip the script and the narrative in my head to make it a positive thing and use it to inspire and motivate yeah. because it can be debilitating. Otherwise, you wouldn't have made it. It would have yeah, been crippling yeah, yeah. because you're like, well, you can never make everyone happy. You got to stick to your... So me and BK, it was nice. We literally process it together and be like, bro, we're just going to do what we do. What If me and you love it, then let's stick to it and people and let and let the people that show up at the shows give us the yeah. you know validation that we're looking for maybe. But like... The two or three comments or the twenty five hundred comments that, you know, <laughs> either way, like the negative is so is spoken so much louder than the positive. Oh, yeah. So we um try to just learn, you know, I would say subconsciously we're learning a lot of those lessons early on. And yeah. that, you know, and I didn't realize we would be living in such a social media dominant culture oh, yeah, where before. we're where we are now. But yeah, dude, like I got a lot of my artist friends that I really close to. A lot of which that are older and mature, and they still, I mean, myself included at times, you, know, you can still get wrapped up in going down rabbit holes of negative comments. And, yeah, and if you're not yeah. careful, you can start to believe some of it. So, yeah. or at least like question yourself. So it can be, it can be dangerous, but it's something that I guess is just a continual, continually navigating that. Well, it'll never, yeah. I feel like the, there's no who, whoever is at the top then as, as soon as you get to the top then I, I mean dude i remember i remember being i must have been during covid with the, with that with that uh luke bryan show at bridgestone oh yeah remember and morgan uh -huh. came out yeah and it was, was you there. and J yeah i know yeah. you were and you and jason uh-huh and then ever like we didn't really know so like like if garth i bet garth who who was the top garth or kenny whoever you say he's probably like these artists behind him that they are seem cool that he's not like, there's always a group that you wouldn't be in or on the, or like even George Strait is like, I wonder what the, what the new guys are doing mm -hmm. or that he's out right. of that group or that, that if so-and-so plays a show, why didn't they ask me to come? Mm -hmm. Maybe he probably wouldn't do it, but he would want to be asked. Yeah, for sure. I, you have, you have to yeah. imagine that's true. <clears throat> I'd imagine so. And unless you're super secure, there's and I don't know too many artists it. that are super secure, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why we're artists, probably. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm sure there's that. You know, any career, there's no career that does this the whole time. Yeah, no. That yeah. just goes up and up and up and up. Yeah. It eventually plateaus. It eventually goes down. And it might come back up. And then you're just... But then it's a matter, in, in my opinion, of how stable are you emotionally, mentally, and spiritually to be able to handle those times? And how are you going to, yep. you know... You learn a lot about yourself when this when the trajectory starts to plateau out a little, or maybe yeah. it's just not the what you've experienced. You know, I mean, even for us, bro, it came to a screeching halt, right? I mean, FGL was doing this, 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 yeah. this, this. We might have started to do this, and then pandemic hit, and it was just like, yeah, whoa, yeah. like no shows, like no nothing, like no what, you right? Know, how do we process this? So, a lot of learning in those years for sure. Well, I wonder if that 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 level of like i feel like there are a lot of i mean i don't know who's over on the top of this hill but like this i just got a tour a uh, uh, an offer yesterday and i go i have to take it this could be the last one mm. 
But it's that true. That, I mean, I, I was gone for eight months. I didn't just say a word. And I came back and everyone was like, yeah, what's up? Good to see you. Yeah. But like, I do remember that because it was a it was a stadium tour with Lauren and Russell. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. That, and, then it, and then it got canceled because of COVID. Yep. And then. That was it. And it's there was crazy, actually multiple. Dude. We were supposed to be on the Chesney tour before I do it support. Support in Chesney on stadiums. <laughs> so we got so that got canceled. Yeah. And then there was a I forget if there was another group of shows that was supposed to happen and then and then got but the last one was the one that we were like surely or maybe we had to just reschedule that we rescheduled that one and moved it to the next year a couple times and then yeah, we I were remember like, that. I remember that. And then Due to all the factors that were at play, we were yeah. like, this isn't going to work. So we just had to cancel it. And it was crazy. Yeah. And unfortunate. Then, yeah. But, well, once you cancel, like a reschedule is you, in essence, keep all the money, you reschedule it. Cancel is, yeah. hey, here's your money back. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. And yeah. a lot of people do. Like, yeah. I, I mean, and it's unfortunate for the other artists too. I mean, we we're all yeah. like having to support our, families our crews our True. band and so when something like that i mean we're all planned for this tour to happen right obviously financially and everything else so then when it just doesn't happen you're just like everybody's kind of in a tough spot so it was unfortunate um but yeah i mean everybody's got that story of something like that this episode of net positive also brought to you by man scaped baby get yourself scaped up for the summer support net positive uh, brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Um, their products are precision engineered. Sorry, ladies, for us, oh, going to benefit the ladies because the men are going to be scaped up. That's right. It benefits everyone really, but the women can't buy it for themselves. They got to right. buy it for someone else. Yes. Well, unless depends on what gender you identify. As. Sure. You know what? We That's, shouldn't discriminate, John. Yeah, You're right. Nor should we p- include that in the copy because they did not say we should say that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, nor nor should we riff too far from no, our direction. That's here. all we had to say. This is an inclusive podcast. Join over seven million people that identify as men worldwide. Come on, <laughs> who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you: twenty percent off and free worldwide shipping, baby. Worldwide shipping. That's actually unbelievable. Yeah, it is. With the code Net Positive, the Performance Package Four Point That's the one I got. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it takes care of you. You're all set. It's got a little light on there. The the battery on that thing is unbelievable. It lasts. So, yeah. yeah, it lasts. I probably yeah. charge like every two months. If that. That thing well, works. Do you keep your chargers out? No, I keep them underneath my sink. Yeah. And, and then, then when I charge, I pull them out, plug them in. And then put it back. Out. Yeah. yeah that's I, it. I, I, you, I do that too. If you wanted to keep them on, the, on like the vanity, they yeah. look good. Like they if you could just good. hide the wires behind sets something. in the thing. Yeah, yeah, they look good. It sits there like in its own little host, holster. I don't like wires being out, but I do have one yeah. for my hair dryer. You have a charger for your hair dryer? No, it's on a wire. Oh, okay, sorry. And then, and then my toothbrush is one on one too. Gotcha. Do you have one of those? No. On the thing, you put it in the thing. No. There's already two wires. Mine's out battery there. powered, yeah. so I can take it on the go. Oh yeah. For when I want to brush on the go. No. Oh yeah, know? like in the shower. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a throwback. A lot of people have questions about yeah. that in the yeah. emails. Yeah. Uh, the lawnmower 4.0 is the fourth generation trimmer, baby. Mm. That's the one I got. You thought it was good. You want to take your grooming game to even further to the next level. The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. Mm. Oh, get yourself kitted up. They got it all. It's time to take care of yourself and go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with code NETPOSITIVE. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code NETPOSITIVE at manscaped.com, baby. Uh, use the code net positive or hit the link in the episode description below. Unlock your confidence. Oh yeah. You do feel more confident. Unlock your confidence. And as always use the right tools for the job with manscaped. We were talking before you came in here is that there's <clears throat> these in essence guys that have, 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 uh, what do you call climb the mountain twice. And you look at a guy like Justin Timberlake or Harry Styles or, mm-hmm. We joke, but we uh, Toby Mac oh, yeah. on our side yeah. that has climbed this mountain up to the arenas or stadiums, and then climbed it again. Yeah, and and the and the best. I was gonna say it's the climb. But I was gonna I, say yeah. Miley Cyrus said it best, baby. <laughs> it came to me and you at the same time. Yeah, dude, I'm about to start artist. singing over here. Yeah. <laughs> but you go if you the, if the funnest time to me the the. Me and my buddy Mike Goodwin were in a Ford Focus and driving around the South. He was my opener. He was getting paid 
$75 and I was getting paid $150 and we stayed at like a Howard Johnson with like a cigarette burn. Yeah, you did. Cigarette stains in the and we were we ate at Waffle House and out of vending machines and we were like, dude, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> really? Dude, I know it sounds cliche, man, but like the second go around, I'm learning. I'm reminded of that, dude. Like the sweetest God, times are happy, not man. with the not with the uh eight buses and the uh arenas and the, uh you know and the stadiums i mean to be honest yeah. it's very uh you get there and you're like yeah. this is awesome this is awesome and then it gets a little bit by year two three four you're like this is a little redundant like we just played this yeah. venue last year it's the same now granted it's great that we're in front of twenty thousand, but yep. it's like i don't it's it, you know i'm only connecting with the first it feels like i'm only connected with the first you know 50 rows anyways and that's yeah. just you know and it's incredible, but honestly, it is the come up. It's the journey. It's the go. It's yeah. the like the challenge, man. That like something about it gives you energy and life. And when you get to that top of the mountain, then it's all about staying there. It becomes a little bit less stay there. A little yeah. bit less fun. You know, you're expected yeah. to be on top. You're expected to sell out. Yeah. You're expected to you know. And then we, there's a, we don't we've talked about this before where you go oh we sold it out and they're like well so and so sold it out on the presale and you're like. Dang it! Damn. Yeah, you're like um, he sold it out on the pre-sale. The you're like, pre-sale. oh, he added a second one. You're like, uh, you're like, you're right. yeah. There's no whatever that there is no <clears throat> top. There right. is no destination. Yeah. I mean, I went to Taylor Swift last like two weeks ago, and I'm yeah. just like, bro, I got so far to go. She uh, just played. Oh, yeah, she just it. sold out this stadium in an, an inspiring way nights. or a depressing way. Both. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> I'm like, both. Yeah. I'm like, man, what makes her so like? that level like Dude, what I, separates there I, I mean i think ultimately like fundamentally it's like her ability to connect with people you know but um yeah. she creates a culture and it's incredible like i was there taking notes the whole time and mentally just thinking like that exact question i kept asking myself what does she do that is different than the all the other artists that allows granted she's been doing it for 17 years so she's built yeah. an incredible catalog and a loyal fan base that's extremely large and that doesn't happen overnight so but she's good at what she does, man. She's good. good at she's really good. Yeah. So or if you 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 I'm just laughing at it like uh Tyler Hubbard's with a note pen and note pen. Oh player. Like, what is the yeah. the only What's guy sitting doing? down in the whole My stadium? daughter's like, Daddy, daddy, let's <laughs> dance. I'm like, hang on, honey. I'm on bullet bullet yeah. number seventeen. Did you see that pyro? Hold yeah. on one second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that how they came in on the downbeat. I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is, it is, it is, it it it's uh I haven't been to the Aeros tour, but my girlfriend went and it is it she's like you have to go well that's what happened to me my wife went yeah. when she was in nashville and i yeah. and i dodged it i was yes. like oh babe you, you go have one. yeah and i just Girls had a blast sitting at the house by myself yeah. like thinking man like <laughs> dodge that crowd tonight baby yeah. and then she's like come she came home like super late she's like babe, well wake me up bro she's like yeah. dude like you gotta show me videos yeah. and yeah. i'm just like well good i've seen the show now i'm good i'm good yeah, she's I'm like good. no yeah. well then my daughter wanted to see it so it was uh, the whole yeah. So then we flew across the country to go see her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> took our you thought you were out. Yeah. Well, it is a, it is a, I think people want to be bigger, bigger than the art of songs or whatever is the, or is the culture or what it stands for. And I think that's what a, any country artist that has done it well, it's like, I don't even know how the Morgan thing happened, but it kind of stood first after he got canceled. It kind of stood for, right. but even Luke, Luke Holmes, it stands for, this the middle class, man. blue mm-hmm. collar, yeah. or what, whatever that uh, Richmond, North of Richmond, saying, have you seen that? Uh-uh. You haven't seen that song? I don't think yes, so. Yes, you have. Maybe. Oh, yeah. We'll play it for you after. But it, it's, it stands for something greater than me. But that's Taylor. Yeah. yeah but that's sure. that's no, But that's everybody. That's every <laughs> church. That's every, I mean, Christianity got the lock on that. Dude, I think people are, not to keep harping on Taylor, and then we can move to the church. But yeah. yeah, it is true, man. Like people are hungry for community, and when you when you go to L.A. and Taylor Swift's there, or just take when she was in Nashville. If you were in Nashville, yeah, every person, everybody was going to Taylor Swift. Yeah, I mean, every hotel was slammed with fans. You could everybody because then everybody wears their outfits. Yeah, that says I'm part of this culture. Everybody's making their bracelets. Yeah, hey, you want to trade a bracelet? It's like this whole thing that's just like a known thing and where you, yep. people feel connected, right? They feel mm. like they're part of something. So it's and, you, and even if you didn't have tickets, people were like standing on the bridge. Oh yeah, bro! I just want to like, stand out here with all these other people that are standing on the bridge just yeah. to be part of this part. And, and I thought, went, yeah, it rained all weekend too. Didn't it rain also for that two of Sunday nights? quite a bit? Yeah. yeah, and it was uh, it, yes. yeah like the Taylor Swift. I remember. I mean, I think I was gone on Saturday Sunday, but 
the like it's Taylor Swift week. Right. Or exactly. we just wanted to go down it to feels Broadway. Like CMA fits. We wanted yeah. to go down to Broadway just to have dinner, just to be like, what's let's see what I, I wanna what's going on down mm -hmm. here. Yeah. yeah. Who's the last country artist to have like a, a or I don't even know if you consider her a country artist. Who's the last artist that had a chokehold on culture like that, do you think? Mm. I'm trying to think. Beyonce's similar. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> I really I don't know, man. Maybe maybe Ed Sheeran. Is yeah. he in is he uh, Garth? I don't know. Lil Wayne? <laughs> Just yeah, <kidding>. yeah. <laughs> I mean <clears throat> Um Cause she, it did feel like you're saying it did feel like she took over the city. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if there's ever been an artist to do it at her capacity. To be honest, like I don't know if Garth can do it. I don't know if any. I mean, I I've never experienced it or seen it. That's a hard question. Well, it's like my my uh, one of my business managers that after coming out of COVID and like we were talking about, you know, touring and social media and videos and podcasts and all that stuff and in essence. He was like, we were looking at kind of financial numbers and all this stuff. And he goes, dude, uh, you're free. Mm. He goes, you're free. It all, what do you, if you woke up tomorrow, what do you want to do? You can do anything you want. What do you want to do? Do you want to do just make sketch videos and not tour? Do you want to tour? Do you want to tour big places? Do you want to tour small places? Do you want to have a podcast? What do you want to, he's like, in essence, the COVID, whatever, what do you call it? A resetting of things. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want to do? And that, I feel like a, a lot of similarities to your story in a way. It's like, dude, What's next? even now you go, I write every day. Mm -hmm. And nobody, has, no, no, your agent or manager doesn't have to text you like, are you writing today? Right. You just, you're compelled to do it. Right. Why? Man, good question. I guess I think I love the, the art of the craft of writing, right? I mean, I think I love waking up in the morning and thinking, man, there's a song that's not in the universe that's going to be here by tonight and that I'm going to go write today with that's some friends. Crazy. And we're going to sit around man. and like yeah. sit in front of a computer and a couple guitars and we're going to make a song that I'm that's going to be in the world forever after this yep. that, you know, whether it's ever heard or not, it will be exists forever. So I don't know. There's something really cool about just being creative, whether you're building a tree house or building a, a song or building anything really like yeah there's something really cool about that so uh i think that drives me and also the challenge <clears throat> the challenge some days it's not easy to write songs you know some yeah, days i'll leave feeling yeah. like can i even do this anymore like i am a piece of you know and it's just like it's every artist and yeah. i mean and then the next week you show up again and you and you're you write a great song and like you know it's just so it's very fulfilling and rewarding yeah. but it's that it's kind of the uh, roller coaster of of like, am I going to get a good song today? Yeah. You know, am I going to leave here feeling Play deflated the after machine. five hours? Yeah. yeah. Does the, uh, I mean, we put out a video two days ago where I, I hit publish and then I was going to play golf. I looked, I looked at the, uh, I'm trying to think of what would be similar in music, but I looked at the numbers and I go, oh, we got one. Cool. Like we got a, we got one. Yeah. Because I put out content every day. And so, and you go, ah, it didn't, it didn't hit like when, when well, five foot nine was the first, your first coming up, coming from as a solo artist, right? right? Mm -hmm. what, who told you, or how did you know that we got one? Do you Man. remember that? Mm, good question. I, uh, I would say on ad day, you kind of know, like if you can get, there's a lot of, actually it's, it's a few layers. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, we got a bite maybe. And then, oh, we're really, oh, we got a big one. Oh, it's. Oh, we oh, got okay, it in the boat, you, right? you don't realize how big it is until <laughs> maybe you, so, yeah, right? Yeah, so, like right, the first makes... thing is kind of like maybe your friends dig it, I and mean, your team's like, "This is great." And then maybe you, you know, you ship it to the label. Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. Then you oh, send I, it to I, the radio, and then it's, you maybe get a big ad day where you're like, yeah. "Okay, I feel supported. I feel like radio's behind yeah. me." Meaning ad day, meaning they added. Meaning the, the first song. time it's yeah, it's it's available for ads for them to add into their playlist or whatever. And then yeah. uh, some of them do, some of them wait and hold off until it's. A little bit bigger song and then they buy into it but you know i had yeah. a big ad day so i i felt that was kind of kind of like that you're going to radio <clears throat> validation as tyler hubbard right for the first that time that must have been crazy it was kind of crazy because yeah, you're yeah. like man i don't know dude like this song feels cool but yeah i could just be biased and honestly people could not buy into me because they want fgl i i don't really know so like it was validating and, yeah. and encouraging to be like oh yeah they they love the song fans dig it it's out yeah. like they're showing up and singing the songs. So it was it was a multi-step process as far as like that moment. But 
That's crazy. This the exact same thing happens to a comic where you go, oh, maybe it just like everybody's like we love it, and you're like, nah, it's probably because they like FG. They you still don't want to accept. Like right. my manager sends me here's the touring numbers, here's where you rank, and it's like, D -d -d and I go, nah, this can't be. You still want to doubt it, right? Somehow, yeah. It's I mean, at least at the beginning, right? I mean, it, it's nice to have confidence, Gosh, but it's yeah, also yeah. hard to be like just to sort of. I mean, I guess vulnerable would be the word. Yeah. And just put your put your art out there and say, okay, yeah. hope they dig it. And if now it's just your name on it. Yeah, but I will say, dude, like there was a lot of freedom in this season, like this go around, because the first go around, like I kid you not, bro, I have a vivid memory of checking my bank account and I had twelve dollars. All my dollars would fit in the van as well. <laughs> I had twelve dollars <laughs> when we were recording cruise. If that to give you diet perspective, dude, that's crazy. Because you think you, you would think you were on top. So like it had to work, bro. Who paid for you being on top of the eighteen wheeler? Almost well, that was little. later on. Oh, that was later. <laughs> that was how we roll, baby. By oh, then, I had like we had no, money for that. Sorry, dude, that was disrespectful. <laughs> that was disrespectful. <laughs> Who paid for the motorbike stunt? That was later. That was later. <laughs> that was still. That was still. Uh, you know. We were $12. probably paying off debt at that point. Yeah, twelve dollars going into it. Straight up in my bank account. Went to lunch. Went went sitting in the studio parking lot to check my bank account, which I had to do every day to make sure I had anything in there at that time. And so yeah. then, like, I knew the next day I'd go wash cars because I had to make money. Like, Again, straight not up the eighties, right? Recently, yeah, ten years ago, yeah, thirteen yeah. or so. But we, so now I say that to say, like, this go around, like, feeding my kids isn't on the line. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I'm gonna yeah, survive yeah, 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 if yeah. if it doesn't quote work, as far yeah. as like the way that me and my team see it. Working. And you say that's so, good or bad for an artist? I think it's good for me because it took a little of the pressure off, but also I still had that. I'm kind of like driven already, so like I had yeah. the. I wanted to work, and I want to be the. I wanted to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, so yeah, like I yeah. still have that drive, but at the same time, it's like, but I can breathe. You know what I'm saying? I don't have yeah, to put yeah. so much pressure on myself. Is it important to write songs? Yes. Is it more important than hanging out with my kids? Probably not at this point because yeah. I can breathe. You know what I mean? And so gives me a little flexibility and ultimately probably more creativity because my stress level's a little mm -hmm. lower, at least financially. So, Do you remember taking, taking let's say, shows or, or things that weren't ideal because you had to pay the bills back then? If you or like... I mean, I remember doing like a kid's karate themed birthday party. Yeah, I was right. like, this is going to go horribly. Man. Was there any of that coming up? They, we got to pay these bills or we got to. I should have asked you to come do the boys birthday party last <laughs> weekend. <That'd be> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me think. I mean, yeah, dude, we we played. A, uh, we had several of those. The one that comes to mind. Um, we played a place called Miss Kitties, but that's not even. I, I forget the name of this oh, other place. There was I don't a place. Think Chris in, Tomlin was at that one. No, nah, <laughs> really? CT wasn't. No, nah, he, he he wouldn't be caught dead with us at that point. <laughs> but we uh, Miss Kitties, Miss Kitties, bro, we rocked it. We played a little restaurant one time. We showed up at a what we thought was a venue in Destin, <laughs> and we pulled up in our van. We walk in. It's like a it's like a beach bar slash restaurant. Yeah, with a little deck where the band was going to set up in the corner. So we set up you know, on the like the little patio. People are eating dinner, right? And we're supposed to start playing at whatever time. Let's just say 8 o'clock, right? So we're up there. Oh, but with no PA and just – we're very small. Basically, like if we were going to like lead worship for oh, a 30-person yeah. youth group, that might have been the PA that we had with us. And we had the amps. And I remember the guys, they would like turn on their amps, <clears throat> turn them as low as they could. <laughs> And we would and we were playing and literally people at dinner would like turn around like angry at us for playing music. Like, get, can y'all turn that down? We're trying to have dinner and we're like, well, we're playing a show. Like we, we and the amps tonight. are already barely on. Like, no, yeah. that I can't actually turn it down anymore. <laughs> so uh that became kind of like And this is that this is back when rich show. people were at Destin. <clears throat> yeah, rich people are in 38 now, but those right. were the they were in people. Destin. The bro, rich people like, were in Destin, dude. Angry yeah. about a guitar. Them out. They left because yeah. of you. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> So yeah, dude, there that became like an ongoing joke for forever, really. Just like can you that turn one. that down? What do you know remember the name of that place? I'm going blank. I yeah, thought it was Miss yeah, Kitties, but now I'm having a vivid yeah. memory that Miss Kitties was, not was Miss different. Kitties. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned 30 people youth groups. Was there that? Was there a lot of that? Yo, before me and BK actually led worship together, again, odds and end yeah, job to pay man. the bills between before publishing deal. Like we went up to Cross Plains. You know where that's at? Mm -hmm. North of town. It's like forty five minutes north. Okay, a city. 
or it's, a church? Well, it's a church. Okay. It's a it's in the middle of nowhere, but uh, your poster it, probably still on the wall. Tiny there. little Baptist church in Cross Plains. We'd go up there. We'd drive an hour, take our little PA every Wednesday night. We, me and BK, would set up. We'd lead worship for literally twenty kids, and then we'd throw in a fat dip and drive home for like an hour. <laughs> And then we would both, and we both made like a hundred bucks every Wednesday. But at the time, that's like that was like a big piece of the bills. Like we needed to make oh, that. Yeah. So, so yeah, dude, it's it's wild that we, you know, I still have those memories. They're pretty special. Of like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't look back on any of that stuff. I look at it with a tremendous fondness. Yeah, of all those memories of me, it kind of staying at the pastor's house or kind of right. like he's like but when you're here can you kind of mentor my son i'm like what am i doing <laughs> like can you kind of talk to him i was like what it, yeah just they, but the church didn't have money either right they were like 200 bucks is a is to right. budget that's a thousand bucks a month to right. these two guys yeah and you were like was there that that idea they were like all right we can't i mean you grew up that way so you're like we can't we can't the pastor can't see us dipping no, nah, I was starting to have my own like kind of effort mentality. I'm kind of like, nah, if I yeah, yeah, if yeah. I'm not convicted, then I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm not worried about your convictions. I'm gonna do my own convictions. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. sort of where it shifted. And by that point, I was doing a lot more than dipping. You know. Oh, yeah. So it was just. <laughs> I mean, we were 22 <laughs> years old. You know, or 21 in in college, and uh, still love Jesus, but we were definitely. Yeah. Um, living by our own convictions we'll just yeah. say that was it always did y'all were the both because if was were both you and bk under the same what did anyone i don't know if this question makes it but it was like dude that's too far or were you guys both pretty much uh, we were pretty much lockstep dude yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know we yeah we were pretty aligned on yeah and just sort of on the same path of just this is where we're yeah yeah i mean i met bk the first i mean i knew of him in college but like the first time that i interacted with him musically was like i saw him lead worship at a thing on campus and then i was like at belmont? Dude, let's go write high some school. songs in bell at belmont and this was like yeah. our se this was our senior year at belmont because he was a baseball player oh yeah i didn't do anything at, in college like don't talk yourself down like musically that. or whatever yeah. i just hung out and yeah. chilled but our senior year, I was like, I saw him leading worship. I was like, let's go write some songs. And then, yeah. so we kind of had the same. No? <clears throat> it was Christian no, country music. music. Yeah, you were in yeah. country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How so. instrumental was Belmont in your music career? Good question. They're was, probably going to take all the credit. By yeah, the way. Yeah, 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 they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to clip everything, this. bro. <laughs> it's they on the home page Belmont. of the website. You guys have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, this is kind of cool. I give, I give Belmont a lot of credit, man, because. Uh, when I went to Belmont, I'll never forget my dad telling me, probably giving me some of the best advice, but also some untraditional advice. You know, he was like, listen, I don't care if you make straight A's. I don't even care if you make great grades, but I want you to pass. Yep. And I want you, but what matters to me and what I think is most important is to know everybody at that school. And I want you to know their, know their name and know everybody at that school. Mm, nice. And I thought, oh, I can do that. So I spent more time and focus and energy on, we can call it networking or we can call it being social or we can call it just, you know, kicking it. But I was like, part of you. No, I can, <laughs> I, mean, I can get here. to know everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I was a pretty social dude. So that being said, looking back now, like half of my class, you know, is like running music row. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it is cool to be That's like, you know, a lot of my connections from Belmont days are still, I mean, my manager went to Belmont. My publisher went to Belmont. You know, a lot of my friends went to Belmont. And still to this day, I'll run into people and they'll be like, yeah, when I was at Belmont, I'm like, oh, you went to Belmont. So even people I don't know, I still have that connection with them, you know, and certain professors and things like that. So it was definitely a, it was definitely a, you know, influential in my career. But yeah, know. well, the Christian, the Christian thing is kind of a, it's kind of run through the whole story right mm -hmm. so this at the beginning obviously the high school and then belmont is a is it loosely christian is it christian what is i think it, it was days? what they called baptist affiliated yeah it's a, yeah 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 but then i think they dropped their affiliation whatever that means yeah and, and uh then, yeah so then the the then yeah. fgl takes off and let's say in the autobiography or whatever that it's it's the top i mean i remember going to all the shows and there was like i remember you're the first person i ever saw that was wearing his own merch at the, really? You were wearing an FGL and you were, yeah. when the ticket was, did Fireball pay for that? 
ad place for me to there. wear merch. Well, they had, when oh, you just, you're sipping no. on fire. You had you had shots of fireball. No, fireball didn't pay nothing, bro. They, they owe you for that. They owe us. They still. owe you for that. All right. Well, all right. <laughs> so the question is basically: so you get all the way to the top, then all everything happens, and and now this this Chris Tomlin a relationship. You're still making music. What what is? What has your faith journey been being like, hey, we got all the way to the top, all the partying and all this stuff, just like everybody's story, but they're, they're your parents or your childhood or, or the faith of your youth, you're past that. But I feel like for myself, you're still like, yeah, but there's something to it. No, yeah, no doubt, dude. I don't know. I would say that even at a young age, I had a genuine relationship with yeah. Jesus. And so... Regardless of my experience in church or my, you know, it, regardless of any of my circumstances, I had that foundation really early on, and I and I felt like it was super genuine, and I I've genuinely felt. And then I lost my dad at twenty, which was a huge uh, <clears throat> moment in my life where I literally felt like, okay, I can. I can kind of be mad at God and I can take two routes here. I can either be mad at God and go this way and just fall off and do whatever I need to do to numb out, or I can lean into it a little bit. Right. And, and I really did just like choose to lean into it. And I, and thank, you know, I was thankful for that relationship, that kind of foundation I had built over my, I mean, my childhood growing up and it's always been kind of woven into my story yeah, and very much like. a foundation of my decision-making, my process, my, um, I guess my reason, my, my, my reason for being here. And so I do have a deep faith to be yeah. honest. And, um, regardless of my relationship with church or my relationship with religion or my relationship with anything else, like my relationship with Jesus has always been there and always been a cool source to go back to and, um, or stay close to or whatever, as we kind of, as the life, you know, happens, you know, you find yourself in and out of that closeness or whatever, but it's always been a place I can go back to and, yeah. and feel and feel loved and feel supported and feel guidance. Cause it's sometimes, yeah, especially during, yeah. When I think about all the trials, all the challenges or whatever, sure. I'd always go back to like, am I supposed to be here? Like, Oh yeah, God does. I feel like still, even when it didn't make sense, like even along <clears throat> the years with FGL dude, like I always thought, well, I do feel called at a, at an earlier age, like yeah. in high school slash college. I was like, I do feel called to music. I feel like God has a plan for me, and it was very vague and very churchy. But at the same time, I'm like I believe this. And then I yeah. never thought that God would take me, that my journey would would go from like I just assumed it would have to be in church if I'm going to be playing music, right? If He's right. going to yeah, use yeah, me, yeah. it'll be in church. Well, actually, nah. If He if He really want to get used, get out of church. And so it took me a while to figure that out and playing bars and clubs and partying and figuring out. And asking the questions like, am I in the right place? Like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing or am I just doing what I want to do? Or am I way off track? Because I can see how this looks and sometimes feels a little yeah. off course. <laughs> yeah. But then ultimately it came full circle back around where, you know, those people that we were able to influence were the people that needed Jesus too. And I was able to, you know, interweave that into our show and our story and tell them who we were in a way that wasn't churchy or that wasn't like, you know, in a sense, tell our testimony without using the word testimony. Right. And right. then, I mean, there was a moment I'll never forget where way later on in our career, like 2019, we were out with Dan and Shay and Morgan and, oh, yeah. and, uh, it was a big tour. We were playing Atlanta, sold out 25, 30,000 people there. And at this time I was already good buddies with Chris. And I said, why don't oh, yeah. you come to the show? And where then he was came this? out. I think I remember at the this. big amphitheater in Atlanta. I think I remember this. I remember. And this. he came yeah. out, and right after Holy, we just sang a couple worship songs, bro. And I didn't know how it was yeah. going to go over, but it was incredible because oh, yeah. the fans didn't expect it, and all of a sudden the that. spirits in the place, oh, dude, yeah. and everybody's drunk and holding their big forty, you know, oh, yeah. tall boys in the air yeah. singing "How Great Is Our God," and it was a, it was a really powerful moment that yeah. changed my life probably and Chris's. I remember him saying it was like one of the most epic moments he's ever experienced. So. That being Gosh. said, I was like, okay, I see what yeah. all that to say. Like, although it didn't always make sense, it yeah. came back around to being like, all right, I'm gonna just keep trying to listen to where I'm supposed yeah. to go and what doors are opening, even if it doesn't make sense. You know. Well, even if I trace that 
all the way back to the beginning where there was some kind of there was some kind of we joke about but the dip you you go i can't we can't do this we have to do this in secret or on the ride home or that but that's how it all starts for all of us it goes hey and that we could ever call that very innocuous kid activity wanting to kiss a girl or wanting to you found a playboy or what it's like it's got to be like very like it's not taboo, secret. right? Yeah, yeah. Very. We got to do this on the behind the church, or right. or after, or when none of the parents know, or and then so then then there's that journey all the way to the end. We're not that's where you go. We're singing these songs, and people are holding beers, right? And, but there was probably, or you're going back to your Christian school and you're playing some of these hits, oh, and yeah, people yeah, aren't yeah, judging yeah. you for it for yeah. one, for and the you, first and, time. And you're looking around like, oh, what? Like right. when we're playing, how great is our God? It's the amphitheater with. Like both of those guys, Morgan and and Dana Shea, have same same background. Right. That they all know those songs too. Right. And then you're looking around like, wait, is this? Like, what, I'm sure there was there was been the voice of Christians from the beginning that were critical of your behavior totally. or life. Were there? Right. Oh, privately yeah. or publicly. What I was, what you were, all that stuff you're saying. It, it that's probably the biggest frustration with the church yeah. is all the shame and judgment right and yeah. and and how that drives the church so mm-hmm. like for me yeah when you think about it you're like yeah any little thing whether it's oh i want to i found a cigarette let's go smoke the oh, cigarette yeah. or let's you know yeah you find a magazine or you or you want to throw a dip in Early, all the yeah, things yeah. that you know if i do this in church it's, i'm going to get looked down upon even yeah. even if it's uh you know for whatever reason so it's it is interesting where I I've really been drawn to cultures that are less judgmental and less. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine most people driven. probably are. Yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, honestly, <laughs> yeah, sure. where you can be yourself and still talk about Jesus without having to yeah. um, feel super judged or feel super. Was uh, there any? Would you ever write lyrics that early on that even though they're country lyrics, you go, "That's probably a little too far," or no? Nah, not really. Yeah, because anything you would so. talk about in country. Yeah, be, I mean, yeah, what are we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I wasn't writing songs about killing people or nothing at the yeah. time. But well, not at the time. Not yeah. at the time. But you well, know. what? How <laughs> new stuff coming though? Do you it's know? All that. <laughs> do you have you heard all the? Uh, you've obviously heard the uh, try that in a small town. Yeah, you've heard that. Yeah. Okay, and what? And that they have become very divisive. Right. Those. Do, yeah. We. It. It. Like you said. Morgan's music or Luke's music, it stands for something. Like when you're, I would imagine, I don't think it sounds like he didn't write that song, but when you're in the studio writing and then the song takes another, takes on a life of its own that you may or may not have intended. You have any experience like that? Yeah, man. Um, What is she's meant to be for an example? Like that was a big song that I had no idea was going to be. When we left that, I mean, let's just put it this way. I, it was the second ride of the day. It was nighttime ride. We didn't yeah. even we weren't planning to write. We were at dinner and got a phone call from our manager that was like, "Hey, uh, Charlie Puth. We were supposed to write with Charlie Puth actually, yeah. and then it got canceled. And then so then we were like, "All right, we're not writing tonight." And then BB somehow got a call. Hey, BB Rex is available to write. Would you guys want to write? Sure, let's write. And so that day, <clears throat> yeah, the same day or that night, and then. We were tired. We didn't really know who BB Rexa was or what the night was going to be like. So we're walking back from dinner and back to the studio. Back to this, yes, yeah, sorry, right, back yeah. to the studio. Um, and and the title got t- Haley. My wife was walking with us, and I'm like, I don't know how this is going to go. Or whatever. She's like, Oh, if it's meant to be, it'll be. It'll work out. So I said, Well, that'll be the title. So I wrote that down, <laughs> and then I got in there and uh, I meet BB, and it was me and Josh Miller and David Garcia. And uh, she thought I was Little Big Town. She didn't know who <laughs> good, she good, was. Good, good, good. Good start. That's how it started. And then I didn't know, honestly, who she was. So we spent a minute or two getting to know each other and then uh, wrote Meant to Be in like a couple hours. And then I just thought, well, it's a decent song. Yeah. Like nothing great. And uh, she came by the next day said, I really love this song. I want to finish it and re-sing a couple things. And then so I thought, well, that's cool. She likes it enough to come back and yeah. – and, uh, re-sing a couple things that's that's a good sign and then uh again just thought i had a cool mediocre song and she put it on her ep which was like six hip-hop songs and then meant to be yeah 
and it just took off, dude. And so she was like, "Hey, uh, yeah, we got." And one. she's like, "I didn't mean to be a. It looks like I'm going to be a country artist now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, really? uh, all these hip hop songs are getting overshadowed by this, you know, simple country song that we wrote. But uh, wow, yeah, that song took on a life of its own, bro. And yeah. it was one of our biggest songs ever. And you just, you know, you just never. That's also why I love showing up to rights because you just never know, man. That sounds well. Does your? Let me ask you this." Might be too personal, but when you play that song live, is your wife like, "You're welcome"? Yeah, Does you're she take welcome, for that? bro. Yeah, she's she like, takes publishing. My, yeah. yeah, she <laughs> takes plenty of credit, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does. Like, oh, this well, I was standing next to her at, at Whiskey Jam. Yeah, and to see that, I thought that was that was such a special moment because I think we're all with, with, with UTA. We're all the same yeah. agency, and that's how we all got there. What was that? What was that like last week? It was great, man. Yeah, it was really cool. That was an awesome show. I never played Whiskey Jam and Epic Night. But think about that but, from the start to where you're like, those are the you just kind of like skipped those steps, or that you're like, we just went from the van to not to the top, but it was very meteoric. Yeah, we and did. You're like, right, a lot of that stuff that you just were like, we never, we never did any of this. Right. We yeah we we didn't we skipped quite a few things and uh, or at least tried to. You know, like just say, for example, like radio visits. Like we didn't yeah. spend, we didn't do radio tour, good, yeah. but we were able to like create a radio room on yeah. on our tour and invite everybody in and try to get to know everybody on in our own kind of our own uh, little way. But but yeah, like I'm getting to redo a lot of things that we either skipped or I didn't do right the first time, or yeah. um, or I want to do again, or I need to do again to reestablish who I am ten years later and reintroduce, yep. get to know some of these people a little better. So it's been uh. It's been cool and like like you know just doing the whiskey jam thing and now looking over there and seeing my wife, my yeah. friends, uh my creative buddies and then a lot of times my kids too like just sitting side stage and like yeah. it's so much more special when you feel that support, you know, and that love and not that we didn't the first time, but it's definitely different when we're, you know, single dudes and we're yeah. just it's us and the band and that's all we well, Was had, there so. a was there cuz you played I mean how long's your set? 30 minutes? At Whiskey Jam, it was yeah. thirty. Yeah. So you do. I mean, you do. You do, and you're set now uh, as a solo artist. You did. You did nod to the to the former days. Totally. And you do that. What's what's that like going singing an old hit? It's cool, man, because it's kind of like part of my story, and I use it as an opportunity to to kind of reflect and give yeah. the fans a few hits that I know they want to hear. Yeah. Um. And it's it's an important piece of who I am, and and you know, those songs are they're just massive, and it helps connect the dots for the fans, you know. But it's been interesting now because I'll play Cruise, yeah, and a lot of times I'll say like I give it a moment to tell the story a little bit and just yeah. and show uh, my respect for all the people that are here that kind of like a nod to ago. the yeah, yeah no yeah, doubt sure. And you got some kids in the front that don't even know it. Dude, I was going to ask you that. That was going to be because you go, wait, that's that guy? Right. That's crazy. And so you're still dude. watching the people connect the dots. You literally have people looking at their spouse or their friend and being like, oh, he's saying that. That's right. And then you have some people that don't know it at all. And then you have some people that already knew it that are, that are just jacked that I'm singing it. Yeah. And then I go right into five foot nine. So it yeah. really, then they're like, that's the guy I know from that song. But I didn't yeah. know he sang that song. And then you got the kids that are like jamming hard on five nine. Yeah. And so what I've seen is like a transition from like Cruz being like one of the bigger moments oh, yeah. of the show to yeah. like now it's like a big moment, but then five foot nine hits and it's like yeah. a bigger moment. So you're just like, whoa, gosh. It's it's pretty cool. But it is important. And and uh especially right now at this phase of my career, you know, like I've only put out one record. So like oh, if yeah. I'm playing a 75 minute set, <laughs> I only got 18 songs Yo, yeah, in the yeah. marketplace. So like that, if that I play my whole record, that, yeah, that exists in <laughs> it yeah, yeah, exists. Yeah, yeah. And so like But you're all, but you have to be the headliner. So yeah. when you on there you're like, "Well, oh. yeah. So I've played <laughs> yeah, a few, what? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll play Cruise and Meant to Be and yeah. then I'll play obviously 5 9 and Dancing and the rest are kind of album cuts, but we just yeah. do the best we can to um you know, a lot of the songs still connect and people still mm -hmm. know the words, but uh, it's a journey. We spread the hits out and, uh, you know, it'll be fun to continue to build that catalog and be able to have more songs to choose from yeah. in the set. Was there in the, in the, it was like when, when we connected backstage that there was, there was like an energy of like, it almost reminded me of like, cause I was hosting 
and I don't host, but I was like, it was with my agency and it was a country thing. And they were like, and I go, dude, I mean, I feel like in a lot of ways there's similarities me and you coming over there to like, dude, we've been doing this career right. for forever, but we like, we're both like, this is our first time, like, this is our first time doing it. All right. Not singing music or doing comedy, being on stage before be like, I don't, there was like versus maybe those stadiums that you had been to now two and three and four times. Right. And you, it was, you knew the songs like the back of your hand. Right. Everybody, you, I don't know if you contractually have to play them, but you should play them. Right. And your whatever stage your personal life is in or, you, or that you go, I see some artists, they go, they're here, but like, they're not here. Yeah. Like whoever, yeah. the guy is like, gone. Yeah. You can just kind of be at home, phoning it in and autopilot. Yeah. Playing for 30,000 and you just played for 30,000 last night. And really? you're singing the same 20 songs, you know, the same number one hits. And that's great. It is good. But, yeah. But again, you can get complacent and comfortable, sure. right? And so, yeah, to go back and say, oh man, we got to build a set. We only got three hits. Yeah. We got to play an hour and a half. How are we going to get creative? You know, how, how do we... Uh, it's exciting. It is exciting, yeah, bro. Yeah, it yeah, gives yeah. you that new... Yeah, man, it's just... It makes you a little bit out of your... A little bit uncomfortable, which yeah. I think is... That means you're growing, so... Um, well, I think that... What, is the unique... Of FGL, the unique... Like, if you're listening to the radio, the unique voice would be yours. Mm -hmm. So when you hear... Uh, one of your you're like oh I know that voice yeah I've I think heard that it's a very it's familiar distinguished mm -hmm. voice you go I know I've heard that voice before yeah that's a guy I I've heard that voice on the radio which, which is would good. help which is nice yeah yeah, yeah. It kind of uh, I could feel a lot of excitement when I was putting songs back out because I feel like radio was I've had people tell me like man we missed your voice on the radio yeah gosh, so that was cool that's good man. to hear man yeah, it was yeah. definitely like all right I got a home here still and yeah. you know you guys are. Showing me the love. But uh, I've also had people, now, I don't know if they mean this negatively or not, but I'll see people be like, man, it sounds just like FGL, bro. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, what do you want from me? So I, me? You, yeah, what do you yeah. want me to do? I, yeah. I, you know, I can't really change my voice. Yeah. Uh, what was it uh, What was it like opening like the bar? Oh, that was fun, man. That was fun. That bar sent me you to get rehab. To that, you get to that place in life, it sends you to rehab. <laughs> <laughs> FGL. Oh, FGL house. A lot of money. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you get to that point in your career where you're like, you know, you want to diversify and have different fun little projects. And that one came about and it was just cool, man. It lined up perfectly and it's nice to have a bar to go to that's just like yeah wrote me off a corner i'm bringing some friends i'll come like through. Yeah, i'm yeah. not waiting in the line and i'll have this and that it was cool man and it's uh something i'm proud of and to have our little mark and on music row and all that well, that was before i mean how many bars how many band or artist bars were down there when fgl like J luke and jason i'd say about half Nah, yeah, what Luke it is and now jason's weren't there nah you were there before them yeah yeah because it's all the same com kind of company right. right yeah we were one of the first in that kind of company there's like i would say like half of them were down there or, kid or a third there? of them no actually now that you're mentioning it probably alan aj's maybe i think his might have been there uh old red old red whiskey row had to have been down yeah there. dirks's bar yeah. was there but there wasn't actually a ton now that i'm no, there now wasn't, that i'm there thinking was about it four yeah. maybe now that's all there is so yeah it's yeah. uh it was cool and that's i mean it's pretty genius for whoever thought about doing that and you know, yeah, and I think that I, 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 it makes sense for us. It's low over. It's low. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? So you don't, you it's don't low risk. Anything. I'm you not over there anything. making burgers yeah. or serving drinks. Well, that's so, what like, we thought at the beginning. Or like, dude, he's like, call. He's like, dude, how much chicken we got left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's not> that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, dude, I don't even know how to get down there. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Well, it's 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 been um, it's been awesome to watch it. I think for in my story, the same. We'll end on this. But is there is there I think there are people, and I feel the same, that there are people, I don't want to say knocked down or whatever you went through, that which it was a lot of us went through, artists yeah. or even everybody in business. And and to see you keep moving and keep being successful and keep growing, there are people that like they've said to me, they're like, dude, you, I'm such an inspiration to them. That's cool. You have to keep going. Cause you've shown me or helped me. So there are a lot of people mm. watching your story. 
cool. It's a compelling story, and there are a lot of people. Do you feel that? Uh, yeah, I think so, man. And I would say that's a that's a good reminder. Honestly, I hadn't thought yeah. about that a lot, but man, I mean, we're kind of getting to the season of both of our careers where we get to inspire people. Man, that's pretty special. It what is. a gift. I it mean, is. honestly, and even if it's just, you know up and comers or whatever but yeah when you go through some trials and you hit some speed bumps you, you know get thrown a curveball and you can yeah. and you can kind of overcome it i think that's uh you know that's admirable and i think that's yeah. cool and i and i do i think it's a gift to be in a position to be able to inspire the the younger generation and oh. um and it keeps like you just said man it kind of motivates me and pushes me because sure. i need to know that my work and my uh art is making an impact or what am i doing it for so what are we out here for yeah so yeah. when people say that i think that's uh that's great man that's part of why we're out here man if you're trying to think if you're standing in line at starbucks and getting a coffee and bk pulls in right behind you what do you say to him <sighs> what's up bro what's up, <laughs> dude? yo you you getting that almond milk latte bro <laughs> is that what he likes I think so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's probably that's probably it. It'd probably yeah. be pretty casual. Keep it pretty light. Yeah. We don't, you know, we uh, we've given each other some space, and sure. I think that's a good place to be right now. Um, so yeah, probably just keep it light. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. There's a lot of. I mean, my my journey's the same in a lot of ways. That there's people that have uh, that. Uh, I don't want to go back to Christianity, but they always say there's like they come. You're on the interstate. They come on. They get on for a couple exits. Yeah, they get like your neighbors, right? Yeah, You're not going to live next to them forever, right? But they kind of come on for a couple exits and yeah. they get off, and you just kind of, dude. I think that's those a couple more true. significant exits that he moves on <laughs> right, with you. Right, right. But yeah, yeah, no doubt. And I think that's life. And I think you know, people. You can grow into relationships and out of relationships, and people come and go. And uh, a few, a few maybe stay more exits than exits than yeah, others, yeah. and those are special relationships too. But uh. Yeah, I think at times I have to remind myself of that too. Like, hey, maybe that relationship or this relationship wasn't made to go past this year yeah, or past, yeah. you know, or or it was supposed to just shift in dynamic. Maybe right. we weren't supposed to spend every weekend together or we right. weren't supposed to do every trip together. So, uh, so yeah, man, it's been interesting as we navigate all of our friendships, really. Yeah. And, and, and as we get older and we, <laughs> you know, relationships change and evolve and shift into different seasons. It's, uh, you do have to give yourself grace and give your friends grace too. And kind of say like, man, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. If we're not the same, we used to be eight years ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where, where we're at. And honestly, it's what I'm, what I've kind of been learning in life anyways, me and my Absolutely. wife. And hopefully that's a relationship that <laughs> doesn't exit off at any, right. at any time. But, uh, if Chris only Tomlin decides to leave, then, then we know. Then we got yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Well, we'll continue. We'll continue on this on this podcast to be the uh, the FGL Stand podcast. Yes. Come on, baby. Yeah. I don't know how that happened life. at the beginning, but we just uh, took a stance and we're not back. I love it, man. Dug the heels in. Well, you well, if any, FGL at, ever makes a big comeback, bro. This will be. Uh, we could just go on tour together. Oh yeah, there yeah. I'll come host it. Yep, that's yeah. it, baby. Tyler Hubbard, thanks for hook. coming along, brother. We enjoyed having you. Come of back course, anytime. Man. Thanks for chatting. That was great. I mean, yeah, sure, it was a little weird, but on the net, net on the on the it, it, it was a positive. But it was a positive. <laughs> you cannot be serious. But on the net, it's a positive.